What's going on, Broncos country? Just your friendly, cliche YouTuber reminder to go ahead and hit that big red sub button because if you want to stay in the know on the latest Broncos news, or in today's case, the latest Broncos rumors, this is the channel for you. Free content throughout the entire year, including the offseason. So go ahead and hit that big red button. Help us get to 6,000 subscribers today. We're a growing Broncos YouTube channel, and be a part of it now. Well, it was supposed to be just a regular Tuesday day, which in my opinion, Tuesday is the worst day of the week because you're not out of Monday just yet, but you're not the weekend. So that's my soapbox on Tuesday. But Aaron Rodgers hopped on the Pat McAfee show after putting out a bombshell, honestly, of an Instagram post last night to talk about his future. Well, it didn't much talk about the future because he went on the Pat McAfee show on today being Tuesday and said there's no decision on his future. But all that came because late last night on a Monday night, he posted a long Instagram post, which honestly is a little bit too long for me to show everyone every single picture and every single bit of text from it. But we'll look at some of the big takeaways from it. And it made a lot of people question what his future is. For me, it's three questions, right? Is he going to stay in Green Bay? Does he want to retire? Or does he want to explore a trade option? I think it's almost a foregone conclusion, knock on wood. If you go as option C, which is look at trade options, the Broncos are the favorites to get him. We'll show you the Vegas odds. And Vegas, they usually don't get these things wrong, has a very strong feeling that if Rodgers is leaving Green Bay, he's going to mile high. But one paragraph in particular in his Instagram post really caught my eye. I'm going to read it to you guys, but I also invite you to go look at it yourself on his Instagram account. He said, to my teammates, past and current, you are the icing on the beautiful cake we call our job, football. The friendships that we will have transcend our collective time in this game, and I am so thankful for the role that each of you have played in making my life that much better. I love you guys and cherish the memories we've made. I'm going to read into this way too much, but to me it kind of read as a goodbye post. And... Ian Rappaport hopped on the Pat McAfee show, great show, and he said that he sees either two outcomes happening. He thinks there's going to be a retirement or Rodgers will stay in Green Bay. But to me, that looked like Rodgers, who, by the way, is a, a, an interesting guy. <laughs> he was on the Pat McAfee show and talked about the latest fads and diets, and uh, I'm not one to shame diets, but he's like on some 12-day cleanse where you throw up and you basically... Use uh, the front door and the back door to get everything out of your system. It was bizarre. But uh, in that, you know, that doesn't seem like someone who'd go through all of that to not play football anymore. And so when I parlay that with someone who's doing everything they can to get themselves in tip-top shape to stay competitive and keep playing football, I parlay that with the idea of he's saying goodbye, like his Instagram post to me read, and his inst and maybe he's just trolling us, but I put those two together, like, you know, the Powder Puff Girls, Sugar and Spice. I get the baby of, I want to keep playing football, but I'm done in Green Bay, but I don't want to leave on bad terms. Hello, Denver. And so, with that being said, do you want Rodgers to come to Denver? Yes, Y for yes or N for no? If you're putting your N for no below... I got to envision it's because you still believe Drew Locke is the guy and Vic Fangio is the reason to blame for him. I would love to see Aaron Rodgers come to Denver because he's a two-time, four-time, whatever it is, uh, MVP and back-to-back -back MVP who I think still has plenty left in the tank. Let me know what you think down below. So, like I mentioned earlier, Vegas came out with some odds about where Rodgers' next team could be if he leaves Green Bay. And the Broncos are an overwhelming favorite, plus 150. The Niners at plus 500 because he grew up a Niners fan from that area in California, so they'll go home for the last couple of years of your career. And then other teams that just kind of make sense because they need a quarterback and a lot else around them is very good. If the Broncos, which I know they are very serious about getting Aaron Rodgers, um, to me, it, it, I hope they don't fumble this and think that maybe we should roll Drew Locke. No, Rodgers is a clear and obvious upgrade. And that's been messaged a handful of times from Peyton, from insiders with the Broncos, who have said there is no doubt that Aaron Rodgers is plan A. And Russell Wilson maybe plan B close to Rodgers, but Rodgers is ahead of everyone else, uh, neck and shoulders. It is not a close gap, I think. So I would love to see the, the Broncos go out and get a competent quarterback. And Rodgers is more than a competent quarterback. Last two years, MVP quarterback, 
averaging what? What's the math right there? 4,207 yards. Fact check me later in the comments. Nearly 70% completion percentage. Nine interceptions. Last time we talked about this and looked at the, the stats here, I did the Ferris Bueller nine times. Only nine picks in two seasons. It's unbelievable what he's done, and I think he still has a lot of football left in him. Not ten years, but I'll take four, and I'll take a Super Bowl in those four years. So when you look at the idea of trading for Aaron Rodgers, Pro Football Focus came out with a mock trade idea just the other day. I think it was just yesterday, actually, so Monday as we record this. And pretty light on the dressing. They have the Broncos getting Aaron Rodgers, and the Packers get a 2022 first. So that'd be the ninth overall pick, so a top 10 pick. Uh, the Broncos second round pick, another early second rounder. 2023 first rounder, which would most likely be a late first rounder after Rodgers takes the Denver Broncos to the playoffs, and hopefully it's the 32nd overall pick after hoisting the Lombardi Trophy. And then a third round pick, which third rounds aren't bad, but they're not first, they're not seconds. If this trade were to actually be proposed, like PFF says, I hope Green Bay would block George Payton's number. Just two firsts, a second, and a third for their back-to-back -back MVP. The Green Bay is going to want a lot more for this guy. I, I don't see him going for anything close to this. I don't see him going for just two firsts, a second, and a third. I think it's going to take two firsts. I think it'll take two seconds. And maybe another first, maybe three firsts. It's the back-to-back -back MVP we're talking about. I, I don't see the, 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 the Packers letting Rodgers go to a team that isn't offering them three first-round picks because they can find a team to do that. There's no doubt, for example, the Washington Commanders, the Commies, would offer up three first-rounders for Aaron Rodgers. Good or bad decision, they would do that. And the, and, um, the, the Packers would take that deal. They would take that over a two-first-round pick from the Broncos. So what do you do with this trade for Rodgers? I hope you're putting A for accept because it's a bargain, to say the least, honestly. Um... The Packers lose this trade 10 times out of 10 for just getting two first-rounders for a guy who's got as many MVPs in the last two seasons. But let me know. A for accept or D for decline. Join me and be a part of the show by interacting down below. Last season was another waste of great contracts, and I don't want to see it spill into this season. And I, what I mean by that is you just locked up Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, and you have Jerry Judy, a great stable of wide receivers for the next couple years. And I don't want to see that talent be wasted by more amateur and less than average quarterback play in key situations by fuddling around with either a rookie quarterback or another-ish Teddy Bridgewater. It's not that Teddy sucks, but you've got a lot of great pieces. This is an extremely talented roster. You've got Williams and Sertan on rookie deals. They're at their cheapest. Do not waste these prime contracts because you don't get the quarterback right. Nothing else matters if you don't get the quarterback right. And so I do not want to see another wasted year of great team-friendly deals because you have Sertan and Williams, like I said, on rookie deals, and the highest-paid player is Simmons and Bowles, pretty much. Um, let's try to forget someone. And Bradley Chubb on the last year of his deal, and a lot of rising stars like Cooper and um, Jonathan Cooper and Browning at linebacker. I just don't want to see... This great crop of young guys and great contracts go down the shitter. All right, so let's move on here. Zach Stevens does a great job of covering the Broncos. Also had this to add. This happened yesterday, was out yesterday, visiting my grandparents, but I don't want to miss it. So Zach Stevens put this out on Twitter. He said, Aaron Rodgers loves Nathaniel Hackett. If you haven't heard, the Broncos hired Hackett to be the head coach. Per Ty Dunn via The Herd. I had a player tell me last spring he may so like Matt LaFleur, Tolerate Matt LaFleur, but he loves Nathaniel Hackett. That's a gooey gaga kind of love in the meetings, is that is what one player told me. If you love Hackett, I know a team that would love to have you, and that would be the Broncos. Now, the trade-off is the Broncos, if they do get Rodgers, is this going to be Peyton Manning all over again, which was great. You got, we, we got a Super Bowl out of it, for crying out loud. But the downside was the post, right, the reconstruction of after Peyton Manning and how the Broncos simply have not been able to find their quarterback since Manning. I don't think it would be the same. I don't think you should compare it apples to apples because there's a different GM calling the shots. You had Elway who just, you know, just who signed Peyton Manning, did a great, you know, that was a great signing. I'm not going to take any credit away from him. 
but he sucked at evaluating quarterbacks after that. He, Paxton Lynch, for crying out loud, was cut by the damn CFL. Canada didn't even want him. And they're the nicest people. And they didn't want him. So I now that Peyton's calling the shots and I have faith in Peyton, I trust Peyton, I wouldn't look at the last episode of veteran quarterback at the end of his career and go, oh, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to enter you know quarterback hell afterwards. No, different. Not, not, not the same. Not the same. All right, next up. We'll talk about whether Kyler Murray could be plan B for the Broncos. If they can't get Rodgers, Rodgers either wants to stay in Green Bay or he wants to retire. Could Murray be an attainable asset for the Broncos to go out and get in the trade market? Before we look at that, though, I just want to remind you guys to subscribe to Chat Sports. That's the, that's the mothership here. That's what keeps a roof over my head and puts food on my table. And so if you love mock drafts, which I know you do because... You're a normal person, and everyone loves mock drafts. And if you love trade rumors, then head on over to Chat Sports. Go to youtube.com slash Chat Sports TV. Over 280,000 people strong. So we're doing something right if we've got that many people interested in what we're putting out there. And I bet you also would be interested. So make sure you subscribe to Chat Sports at youtube.com slash Chat Sports TV. Okay, so like I said, next up we'll look at Kyler Murray, the trade plan B idea. Saw so this uh, on the internet and the World Wide Web yesterday about how the Murray rumors haven't really gone away because Kyler Murray, if you don't remember, he scrubbed his social media of all Cardinal stuff and there hasn't been a rekindling and they haven't made up and gotten together. So here's my trade idea to get Kyler Murray from Arizona to Denver. It's a decent haul, but it's an up-and-coming superstar quarterback on his rookie deal still. So the Cardinals get a first and a second this year, a first and a second next year. That's probably, you know, at minimum, two firsts and two seconds. I'm giving them another first-rounder. I know, three firsts, but I don't think any of those, first, 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 any of those three first-round picks would be better than Kyler Murray anyway. And they get Drew Locke to try and help them jumpstart whoever their next quarterback is going to be in the desert. I get it. That's a lot of players. That's a lot of picks. But at the same time, you got to ask yourself, are any of those picks going to be better than Kyler Murray? I, I'm not saying if you combine the picks, because we saw this year, you can combine talent like the Broncos had, but if you don't have the quarterback right, it all goes to waste. It just does, okay? So with that being said, would you do this Kyler Murray trade? Give me a T for trade or a P for pass. I don't see any of those picks. I mean, I know we're talking about the 2024 draft class, and I couldn't tell you one name that's going to be in it. But Kyler Murray was the first overall pick who has lived up to the billing. And so I would hit T for trade. Yes, I would do this in a heartbeat because it's Kyler Murray. And so, sure, you have some concerns about after his character came out and he's not a great leader and maybe a bit selfish and... Yeah, I look at that as a grain of as a grain of salt, and I'm not talking about the size of Kyler Murray. I'm talking about the the character concerns, okay? But you know, it gets pretty windy a mile high, and I wouldn't want to see him get blown away. And with that being said, he's probably gonna block me on Twitter now, and there's no way he's coming to Denver because I said all those jokes. But I, I I would overlook that stuff. He's young in his career, you know. People mature, um, people grow up, right? He he's what 25, 26, not even that. I don't think he's even 26. Uh, so. I, I wouldn't read too much into that. So I, I would like to see Kyler Murray come to Denver, and I hope you would too. All right, that's going to do it for us here on the Broncos Breakdown. Make sure you guys are subscribed, and we'll catch you guys later here on the channel.